Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation using differentiation. f is a differentiable function. f of x plus y equals f of x times f of y, and we're going to be solving for f of x. Let's get started. So I'm going to start by replacing y with 0, and that gives us f of x equals f of x times f of 0. One of the good strategies is definitely to replace something with 0 or 1. In many functional equations, this seems to work. Now, from here, I can just put everything on the same side and factor the f of x out. That gives me f of x times the quantity 1 minus f of 0 is equal to 0. So this gives us two solutions. Either f of x is equal to 0 for all x values or f of 0 is equal to 1. For the time being, we're just going to ignore the first one because that just tells us that if f of x is always 0, then this is going to work and you can clearly see that. Let's go ahead and focus on the second one where f of 0 equals 1. Now this is good to know because we're going to use this in our equations. All right, great. So let me rewrite the equation one more time. f of x plus y equals f of x times f of y. Okay. Now, I'm going to replace y with h, so let's go ahead and do that. And you'll see in a little bit why I do that. Remember I told you earlier that I'll be using differentiation. So, f of x plus h can be written as f of x times f of h. Now, I I'd like to subtract f of x from both sides. You probably see what I'm getting. My goal is to basically get to the difference quotient. So, I can do that by making the left-hand side look like f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So that's going to be my next step, dividing both sides by h. Let's go ahead and do that next. And we can factor out f of x on the right-hand side, and that's going to give us f of h minus 1 all over h. Okay. Now, what can I do with this? Since I have the difference quotient, I'd like to take the limit. And since f of x is differentiable, that means uh, this limit exists. And let's go ahead and take the limit on both sides and write this as a limit. So, limit as h approaches 0 of f of x minus, I mean f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h is equal to limit as h approaches 0 of now I can just separate the f of x from here and write the f of h minus 1 over h as another quotient. And we'll deal with that in the next step. But if you look at the left hand side, this is one of the things you should definitely know. We do get the derivative of f of x in general. Great. So this is equivalent to f prime of x, which is the derivative. But what about the right hand side? Well, since f of x does not depend on h, it's considered a constant. We're taking limit as h approaches 0. So I can pull the f of x out by using the rules of limits. And then the rest I can write as limit as h approaches 0 of f of h minus 1. Now, this is the critical point, And this is super important because a lot of times we, if we're given that f of 0 is equal to 1, we replace f of 0 with 1. But this time we're going to do the opposite and replace 1 with f of 0. Great. Since f of 0 is equal to 1, I can replace 1 with f of 0. And there's a purpose for that. And I can write the h as h minus 0. Now, what does this look like? Well, if you just consider another limit that you should also know if you're doing calculus or something like that, a limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a basically gives you the derivative of a function at a point, which is f prime of a. Great. So what does this look like? This looks like the derivative of f at 0 because of what it is, right? So this is f prime at 0. Great. Let's rewrite this equation and let's see what we can get from here. So I got f prime of x equals f of x times f prime at 0. Let me write the f prime at 0 first. Okay. Since f prime at 0 is a constant because we're evaluating the derivative. Derivative is a function as well, since f is differentiable. So this is going to be a constant value. So let's go ahead and replace f prime at 0 with something that looks like a constant. How about c? Okay. And then my expression or equation looks like 
f prime of x equals c times f of x. This is great because we found out that the derivative of f is actually a multiple of f, which is really, really cool. All right, so at this point, we can just go ahead and turn this into a differential equation and solve by integration and then determine the constant c if possible. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this next step. So I'm going to write the f prime of x as df over dx. And f just is just going to be f. Instead of writing f of x, every time I'm just going to write it as f. c is a constant. So I'd like to separate the variables here. So let's go ahead and put it like this. df over f equals c dx. c is a constant, so it doesn't matter where it is. Now, if you integrate both sides, this is the critical point. When you have a separable differential equation, you can solve that equation by integration. And you can do that here as well. So if you integrate both sides, we don't know if f is going to be positive or negative on that interval for now. Let's go ahead and write it with the absolute value. So what is the integral of 1 over f? It's the ln of the absolute value of f, right? Okay. And the right-hand side can be integrated as cx. And we can just write the constant on one side. We don't really need it on both sides because the difference of constants is another constant. Now we got this equation. Is that beautiful? Like we got rid of all the primes and the derivatives and all those extra things. And now we're almost there. Let's go ahead and isolate f from here and find the c value. What am I going to do with this? Okay. So I would like to, first of all, get rid of the ln function. So let's go ahead and do e to the power of both sides. That's going to give me the following. I know there's different ways to do it, but I just like to do it this way. And this is going to give me the absolute value of f equals e to the power cx multiplied by e to the power k. All right, great. Now, I can just write this as a plus minus. So f can be written as plus minus e to the power k, which is a constant, by the way, multiplied by e to the power cx. Since e to the power k is a constant, and with the plus minus sign, I can just go ahead and replace it with a nicer expression. How about calling that m? Great. So from here, we get our f of x value, and f of x becomes m times e to the power cx. So we kind of got the value of f of x, but obviously we want to determine what the c value and m values are going to give us, if possible. And at this point, we can actually determine the m value using the um, original function. Remember, our equation was given in a form that looks like this. We were given that f of x plus y is equal to f of x times f of y. Great. So what I'm going to do is plug this into the equation, and try to find some of the constants here. Great. One of the nice things about uh, solving a functional equation is that when you get a solution, you can plug it in and kind of test it out. Great. So now, f of x plus y is just going to be m times e to the power c times the quantity x plus y. So I can write it as cx plus cy. And on the right-hand side, I have f of x, which is m e to the power cx and m e to the power cy. When you multiply these two expressions, you get the following. m times e to the power cx plus cy equals m squared. And when you multiply two powers with the same base, you add the exponents, and you can just go ahead and add these exponents. Obviously, e to the power of something is never going to be 0. So what I can do is I can just cancel these out, right? Well, you can divide both sides by that. And this gives you a nice equation for m, which is m squared equals m. But this equation has two solutions m is either 0 or m is 1. Great. Now, if m is equal to 0, remember, we wrote f of x as m times e to the power c, cx. And if m is 0, then from here we get f of x equals 0 for all x values. And remember, at the very beginning, if you go back, remember when we solved the uh, equation or we were trying to find the f of uh, x value or f of 0 from here, we said that either f of x equals 0 for all x or f of 0 equals 1, and we use the second one. If that's not the case, f of x is going to be 0, and that's what we get from here. That's one of the possible solutions. So if f of x is always 0, f of x is always 0, then it's a solution. What happens if m equals 1? Great. That's a better solution, in my opinion. And from here, we get f of x equals 1 times e to the power cx, and that basically gives us the more general solution. So in other words, if you have a functional equation like this, then the exponential function is going to be a solution, and c is a constant.
All right? Great. Well, this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.